Hello, hope you're having a good day. I want to make a video today uh, talking about this well-intentioned article that was published recently in The Guardian uh, called Books by Women That Every Man Should Read. And uh, this has provoked a lot of discussion and uh, I have some thoughts and feelings about it my, myself. Um, so there's an article like discussing this issue and why it is being brought up. And then there are recommendations from prominent male authors that are suggesting uh, books by women that they think every man should read. I guess as a kind of way of being like, hey buddy, uh, women write some pretty good books too. So uh, here are some suggestions. And uh, so I'm going to uh, discuss this issue in general because I have some thoughts and feelings about it. And then I can't resist a book list. So uh, I'm going to look at some of these uh, recommendations uh, that are given and uh, and some of the issues that they raise in themselves of, of uh, which books they recommend and how they recommend them. Uh, so uh, in general, uh, looking at this overall issue, um, this is sort of brought up um, because it uh, quotes this statistic that uh, roughly the average women will read 50-50 uh, uh, books uh, written by men and written by women, whereas uh, men, um, it quotes that uh, men on average will read 80% books by men and 20% books by women. Uh, so first off to say uh, whenever any statistics are quoted in any news article or news item, uh, I and don't give a source of those statistics, I immediately start questioning like, well, where did these st statistics come from? Um, what were, were the amount of people that were surveyed um, to get these st statistics? And where were, were they surveyed? And, and all of those have a really big factor into uh, how these statistics I have real trouble saying that statistics were made <laughs> because, um, yeah, that that all affects uh, the the outcome of it. If you only survey like a hundred people from a certain area of, say, like Oxford <laughs> in a certain neighborhood, I mean, that's that's going to affect um, what the the results are. Um, not that that I'm saying I'm questioning these statistics um, because I I think it probably is true of of the general reader and that that's kind of uh my impression uh, i mean not of my readership circle um not of me and a lot of male readers i know online and have interactions with read a lot more books by by women um than that figure suggests um but uh but yeah in general um, i think uh this is a kind of issue that that uh, that men primarily read books by other men, and it's uh, something that I've brought up before here on my channel, and uh, which I had a very personal response to when I was uh, confronted once by someone that had looked at my blog and said, uh, "Do you only read books by women?" Um, even though it was quite clear that it, it was pretty much fifty-fifty that I. I read books by both men and women, but uh, but this issue comes up when uh, men see that and then uh, if men aren't in the majority of the media that is being consumed, then men assume that there is a prejudice there uh, against them um, in some way, in a, I think a kind of slightly paranoid way. And uh, the thing is that I think that this is a, a big much larger issue to do with culture in general in a certain kind of masculinity and conception of the actions and the expectations of, of what men should be consuming and, and how they should be acting. And and uh, and so, you know, I've certainly found this being a, a man that, um, that, that other men will look at my reading and then make assumptions about me based on that, that reading, um, even though I do read quite a lot of books by men as well. And I and I'd probably say that uh, in terms of like general readers, I read a lot more books by men than other men that would criticize me for 
seemingly only reading many books by by women uh do you, do you see what i mean um so yeah that um that that uh, that really concerns me and this came up again recently when uh someone commented on a blog post of mine saying like you know you really should read more books by by men it's great that you read lots of books by women and uh but lots of books by queer authors but what about straight men it seems like you're um having a bias towards <laughs> these these other authors and uh and so i said well look at some of the books that i read in the past month um there's this book this book and this book by a straight man and he said oh no no you misunderstood what i meant i i really meant that uh, you should be reading books uh by uh men that are under 30 um that are heterosexual and that are white or english speaking and it's like, wow, okay, uh, how specific are you going to get in terms of uh, making suggestions for my reading in, in that way? And uh, so, of course, we're, we're all, we all just read what we're drawn to wanting to read. I mean, unless we're reading for professional reasons, uh, you know, we're mainly reading for enjoyment and pleasure and leisure. Uh, so you should read what you're drawn to. Um, but at the same time, I think we should be looking at uh, if you only read books by men uh, over the past five years, um, maybe question like, well, why aren't I reading more books by women as well? Or maybe I should mix up my reading a, a little bit. So and it, it, I think it is all like a big um, issue that that um, that is there. But yeah, I think it's more to do with the larger culture in in general. And yeah, and, and the, the whole, though I think this is like a well-intentioned exercise, I think there is something a bit icky about it of of men recommending books by women as if, men wouldn't listen to recommendations of books written by women given by other women. It's a bit weird and, and strange. And uh, and actually, I loved there was a uh, social on social media on Twitter. There was um, this really great response uh, that somebody posted uh, sort of to this whole article in general. I mean, there's been lots of posts about it, but um, by, by Amber Sparks, who, who posted this saying, some books by men you may enjoy, ladies. The book with wizards, that motorcycle book, the time when a man was sad, I remember a woman in my youth, the older man and the young nymphet. Some thoughts by me. <laughs> Men go to war about a family, but definitely not domestic fiction. And uh, yeah, that's something that is uh, kind of a response to something that's covered in this article too, of this conception uh, that uh, some of these male writers um, wrote of why they think uh, men mainly read books by other men of this stereotype that uh, women mainly write about domestic fiction and relationships and feelings, whereas, you know, men write about war and power and big ideas. And of course, there's endless examples of women that write about these issues too. But uh, but yeah, there's this whole issue, <laughs> that stereotype that, that exists, which um, I mean, really, if, if men are still believing that in the year 2022, I don't know if just some suggestions by prominent male authors of female writers to read, I, I don't know if that's going to do enough to correct this this much bigger uh, issue in, in society. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the whole issue in general. And it is one that I'm continuously confronted by, um, or at least every once in a while, I get, you know, a sort of odd comment um, like that on my blog recently about my reading habits and sort of criticizing them. And and uh, and that's definitely something I experience as a male reader of these stereotypes and, and perpetuating these masculine ideas about expectations of what I should be reading and how I should be acting. And so, yeah have have issues with that. So let's, let's look at some of these, uh, this list of uh, male authors recommending their favorite book by a woman. Um, so first off, you have Howard Jacobson uh, recommending Middlemarch by George Eliot. Great, that's a, a great novel. Uh, but, uh, but in this, he says, uh, at the, the end of this short thing, he says, no man or woman can be considered educated who hasn't read it at least twice. <laughs> well, okay. I, oh, why do we have this thing? And it's one of the 
things I like least about the bookish or literary community that there is this snobbish attitude about what we should be reading. And if you haven't read this thing, or if you haven't read it twice, then you're not educated, then you're not a good reader. Um, I think that is such a snobbish and horrible attitude. I have read Middlemarch only once, and I guess that means, according to Howard Jacobson, I'm uneducated or not educated enough. Um, and, and I'm sure lots of other people have had that experience as well. I mean, I'd like to reread it sometime, but I've just not got around to it yet because there's lots of other books to read. And you know what? I tried reading Howard Jacobson's novel, The Finkler Question, and I, I couldn't get through it. I read about 150 pages and I was just bored. I, I didn't find it uh, interesting and I didn't find it funny. Um, I think it it was meant to be a comic novel, but that wasn't coming across to me. So, I mean, my advice to Howard Jacobson is maybe spend less time rereading Middlemarch and more time writing in novel that's actually engaging. Uh, but then who am I to say that um, because, uh, you know, this is a prize winning author that is much lauded. Uh, who am I to say? But uh, but yeah, I couldn't personally couldn't finish this novel. And when I got this down to, to look at it and see what page I got to, um, I found inside my, my bookmark was uh, to get to see Janelle Monet a number of years ago, um, which was a lovely thing to, to come across. But uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, fun to revisit it to see that ticket. But, uh, but I don't think I'm going to go back to reading that book anytime soon or anything else by Howard Jacobson. So next recommendation is by Ian McEwen, uh, who's uh, good on him. He recommended a brand new book, uh, which is We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Bervaltz, um, which is a book I talked about recently in a book haul video. Um, she's a Dutch author, and this is a novel all about our social media age and a kind of critique of that, and uh, is meant to be quite humorous as well. And some people commented that this is a really great book, and it's quite slender. So yeah, this is a book that I, I do want to read soon. Uh, Simon Rushdie um, <laughs> recommends Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, uh, which yeah, is always a really great recommendation um, you know, the way that this novel also portrays the after effects of war as well as a woman giving a party. I mean, I guess that's a kind of strategic uh, recommendation to say that, that hey, uh, here's a woman, Virginia Woolf, that wrote about both these things very well, um, which she did. So yeah, this is an amazing novel and she is an amazing writer. So great. And then Richard Curtis, um, who sort of started off this article, um, the the beginning of it, it discusses how um, he realized that uh, he had had this, I guess, unconscious bias for quite a long time, that he'd mainly been reading books by men. So uh, over the past few years, he's consciously been trying to read more books by women. And he recommends the awesome Olive Kitteridge uh, by Elizabeth Strout, a brilliant writer and a brilliant novel uh, about a very difficult woman. And yeah, I just, I love this book so much. So um, yeah, what a great recommendation. Uh, you also get uh, Stuart Turton um, recommending The God of Small Things by Aaron Dati Roy, another great novel that yeah, I would definitely recommend as well. You have Michael Donker recommending Homegoing by Yaa Jiasi, um, this amazing family saga, um, which is so immersive and wonderful and fascinating and just completely gripped me all the way through. So, and has such an amazing cover um, here for the UK hardback edition. Um, so I just love this novel as well as uh, her follow-up novel, Transcendent Kingdom, which I'd also definitely recommend. Uh, there's uh, Blake Morrison who recommends Regeneration by Pat Barker, um, a great novel about war um, yeah, that I'd also like really highly recommend. Andrew Marr recommends The Seasonal Quartet by Ali Smith, um, hoping at some point there'll be an omnibus edition of uh, all of the, the Seasonal Quartet in, in one book. Um, I think that is coming at some point, but, uh, but yeah, such a brilliant series. And so yeah, definitely something that I recommend everyone should read as well. Um, Derek Owusu uh, recommends The Terrible by Yersa Dali Ward, um, which is a novel I, I haven't read, but, um, but I, I definitely um, was interested in reading and want to, to read as well. Um, he says that he, he read it three times because he just just so engrossed by it. He doesn't give the qualification that if you don't read it three times, then you're not 
educated enough um, because he definitely wouldn't believe that or think that or say that. Uh, So, you know, what sort of author would say something like that? Hmm. Um, Simon Sharma um, recommends uh, anything by Daphne du Maurier uh, because she is such a a great writer. And I I read Rebecca for the first time a couple of years ago. And yeah, what an amazing novel. So good. Uh, Sanjeev uh, Bhaskar uh, recommends To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, um, which um, some people were uh, kind of mocking that uh, anyone if you say to a man, what's a great book by a female author? To Kill a Mockingbird is the first one that comes to mind. And yeah, uh, any list of books should, I think, include, or at least a list like this should include a mixture of classics as well as contemporary books. Um, So I guess it's good that it's on there and it is an amazing novel, but it's been an established classic for a really long time. Adam Thurwell recommends uh, Cherie by Colette, um, which is a really great uh, novel, so engrossing. Uh, moving story about gender and relationships and all of those dynamics. Uh, And uh, Rob Doyle recommends Orcs and Crake by Margaret Atwood. And yeah, what an amazing, uh, engrossing, imaginative, dystopian novel uh, that that says so much about gender as well as so many other things to do with the environment and society in general and where it is going. Um, So yeah, (laughs) really great novel. Um, You have Krishna uh, Guru Murthy, uh, the journalist, uh, recommending The Goldfish. Finch by Donna Tartt, um, which is such an engrossing, wonderful novel. Um, Even though it's quite long, I think I read it over the course of a few days because I was so gripped by it. Uh, Lee Child recommends The The Last Widow by Karen Slaughter, um, a book I've not read, uh, but uh, says that it's a great story, great characters, pace, thrills, and action. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I guess that's the kind of description that is uh, meant to entice men. Uh, <laughs> Justin Webb recommends uh, The Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch. I have this beautiful first edition of the novel that uh, my partner got for me. And yeah, this is such a wonderful novel, um, a prize-winning novel that uh, is all about uh, the life of a man, uh, focusing on his meditations and reflections on life. And, uh, and yeah, what a brilliant writer Iris Murdoch was. Uh, Then John Boyne recommends The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and three quarters by Sue Townsend. I've not read this book. Um, I'm I'm, I'm not really that interested in John Boyne's opinions or recommendations, so uh, I'm just going to move on from that. Uh, The writer Chris Power recommends My Phantoms by Gwendolyn Riley. Uh, So I've not read uh, this, her most recent novel, but I don't want to because I read her novel First Love and did not enjoy it at all. Uh, But I know she has plenty of fans, so if you're a fan of Gwendolyn Riley, then great. I'm glad you would enjoy and appreciate her her work, but personally, I do not. And then you have Moses McKenzie recommending uh, Sinning, Swinning, and Getting Merry uh, Like Christmas by Maya Angelou, um, the, the great author's, uh, one of her works of autobiography. And uh, yeah, this is a book I've not read, but um, that I'm sure I would really enjoy reading. So that is the list that they give. Um, Obviously, there are many, many more books by, (laughs) written by women that are definitely worth reading and that, um, you know, I would say should be required reading by by men. Uh, I want to, because I want to throw in some of my own suggestions as well, um, even though there are so many books written by women that I would definitely recommend, uh, that I have recommended on this channel. Uh, There's The Shore by Sarah Taylor, um, another great family epic um, that is so sweeping and immersive and fascinating, um, looking at the changes in society on this one small island, but also changes in this this family over the generations of, of, of uh, their experiences and the reverberations of uh, things that occur in the past, um, which then also have an impact upon the, the present. Um, such an amazing novel that I really highly recommend, because uh, it's me, also Joyce Carol Oates. I'm going to throw in her novel, uh, What I Lived For, um, which is an amazing study on, even though uh, Joyce Carol Oates primarily writes about the um, experiences of adolescent women and girls, uh, 
also wrote this amazing novel all about a, a certain type of man and uh, exploring uh, Dana's life um, and all about his experiences and thoughts and feelings and prejudices and ideas and uh, complex uh, his complex psychology um, in such a fascinating way that is so gripping and wonderful and um, so yeah definitely another book by Joyce Carol Oates that I would recommend and then uh, finally uh, the novel The Eighth Life uh, by Nino Haratachvili um, I have a penchant for family sagas and this is another brilliant one um, following multiple generations of the family over wartime and uh, their experiences and is so gripping and immersive and uh, I just have so many wonderful things to, to say about this book um, it has it's filled with so many great stories that are really gripping and uh, how lucky are we that a new novel by Nino Haritachvili is being published in English later this year so I'm really looking forward to that um, more to come yeah a great epic book so <laughs> those are all my suggestions and some thoughts and feelings about the issues that this article raises I'm sure there's a lot more to say about it uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts or feelings about this issue as well as um, these particular suggestions that are made by these prominent male authors um, in in this article uh, yeah I mean I think it's great that this is being raised as an issue but uh, but yeah the way they're going about trying to create change I don't know if this is actually going to have any impact will male readers read this and be inspired to pick up a novel by a woman um, maybe and if they do that's great uh, but yeah I think there's a lot more that needs to be done to change this whole conception of masculinity in our culture I mean there's a lot being written about there's uh, a, a lot being said about this in the news and so it is an issue I think that is gradually changing and uh, we're where where our ideas and thoughts and feelings about it are are slowly changing over time but uh yeah no more work needs to be done so thank you for listening to me ramble about this this issue and going through this list um uh I, but uh, yeah i'd love to know your thoughts and reactions in the comments below and i will speak to you again soon have a wonderful weekend bye bye